Hi, I'm Mr. Buckingham, and this video is on introduction to macromolecules. On the left side of the screen, we have a pretty healthy lunch, and on the right side, we can see that it's a pretty unhealthy lunch, and why does it make it unhealthy versus uh, healthy? And it is because there's too much of one thing, and that too much of one thing could be the macromolecules in the food. So this Mountain Dew has a ton of sugars and sugars are actually a macromolecule so if we split these apart macro the prefix means large and molecule is just elements atoms bonded together and so it's going to be a large molecule that will be able to perform a certain function and they are absolutely needed in our bodies to survive so the lunch debate versus uh, the cost versus healthiness in schools is, is a pretty large debate and we're figuring out what is actually good for our students. So in this video we'll talk about the structure of macromolecules and they are all going to contain carbon. So if any molecule contains carbon it's going to be called organic and it doesn't mean that it's from some organic farm it just means that it contains carbon. And all macromolecules are uh, the subunits are called monomers, so it's the, the single smallest subunit. And if we want to go from monomer to polymer, polymer meaning many of those units, it is going to go through dehydration synthesis. If we want to go to the reverse reaction, that's going to be hydrolysis. And we're going to talk about functional groups. Functional groups are going to be attached to macromolecules to perform a certain function or uh, incite a behavior for those macromolecules. And examples of the four you need to know for this class are going to be nucleic acids, and that's going to be DNA and RNA, lipids, which are going to be fats, proteins, not just for your muscles, they're going to perform certain functions in your body, and carbohydrates, which are going to be the quick sugars and quick energy, or the small sugars and quick energy. So why is carbon the, the element that is used or that is present in these macromolecules? So carbon, if you remember from chemistry, is going to have six protons, which means that it's going to have six electrons. And if it has six electrons, that means it's going to have two that are going to be in the inner shell and then four in the outer shell, and they're going to be four unpaired valence electrons. If they are unpaired, they're going to have an affinity or they're going to want to pair with other electrons from other elements. So we're going to have four possible bonds with other molecules or different elements. And when it does that and it has four of them, it is very stable. So that is why carbon is used in, or is present in these macromolecules. We could also talk about silicon. Silicon could be stable as well. Um, so our computers are made of silicon. Certain um, uh, other objects that are pretty inert or don't harm us are made of silicon. So functional groups, uh, it can look really confusing at first, but if you just break them apart, um, it's not that confusing. So what I recommend is memorizing these different functional groups. Um, carboxyl, C-O-O-H is what we write, C-O-O-H. And a carboxyl uh, group will donate that hydrogen at the end. And when that happens, it can make a solution uh, acidic. Our carbonyl group is going to be C double O, or double bonded O, so C O. Um, and these are groups in here, they just mean that it's going to be a different element or a different molecule attached to uh, that functional group. A methyl group is going to have CH3 written as that. And uh, if we attach a methyl group to, let's say, our DNA, it's going to actually shut down the expression of that DNA. Um, and we're not going to have any genes um, or we're not going to have any proteins that are going to be made from, from that uh, portion that is shut down. And this little squiggly line just means that it's going to be attached to a different molecule or element. Uh, aminos are really important because they have nitrogen. So this one is a pretty easy one to identify. So NH2. 
2, and aminos are important because if they are paired with a carboxyl group, that means that, and some other uh, groups, it's going to be amino acids, and amino acids are going to be the monomer, or the smallest unit, to make proteins in our body, which are super important. Phosphate groups are going to have a phosphate in the middle, and if we uh, use that in our DNA, that means that, or um, there's a uh, amino acid, nucleic acid, sorry, nucleic acid uh, ATP that is going to be used for energy. So uh, some of the bonding energy from a phosphate group is really important for energy uh, conversion in our bodies. And then we have the hydroxyl group, and the hydroxyl group is going to be um, this C, this OH group, which is going to be able to make uh, molecules polar, which are going to make them be able to readily dissolve in certain solutions. So the main point of this uh, video is to be clear that polymers are made of monomers. And if we, oops, we'll go back. If we um, understand that, we'll understand that uh, our bodies will need to break down certain things and our bodies will need to build up certain things. It just depends on what we need in our body. So our bodies need to be able to build certain molecules and to do that, it's going to be made from dehydration synthesis. So this hydrogen on this side and this uh, hydroxyl group on the other side, they are going to bond together and they're going to leave and if they're leaving together, that's going to form a water. And then this bond is going to be made. So if we're talking about proteins and amino acids, so if each one of these little circles is an amino acid, that means that this bond is going to be a uh, peptide bond. And they're called different types of bonds depending on the macromolecule. So if we want to, if we ingest a bunch of those amino acids and we want to build a bunch of proteins, we have to go through dehydration synthesis. If we want to break down those, those macromolecules, it's going to be the reverse, and it's going to be called hydrolysis. So we can add water to this molecule and break it apart, so then this hydrogen and hydroxyl group will be uh, added again. And it can break polymers into smaller units, monomers. So that's going to be the breaking. All right, and so the groups that we have are, uh, the first one, carbohydrates, and carbohydrates are necessary for energy and sometimes storage of energy. And so if you ever see anything that uh, has like a simple sugar or is gonna have like a starch, that's gonna be a, a common carbohydrate that we consume. So glucose is a really good example of carbohydrate. It's the monomer, one of the monomers for carbohydrates. And if we put a bunch of those glucose molecules together, we'll get the polymer, and it could be um, something like um, amylose. And we need these polymers in order to uh, store some energy in our body. So uh, soda is going to have an incredible amount of uh, sugar, and we have way too much of it. So if you ever drink uh, soda, you'll notice yourself, you'll have a really quick uh, burst of energy because your cells are, are able to uptake a lot of that uh, sugar and convert it into some energy. Lipids are needed for energy as well, and they're actually a little bit more efficient because they have a ton of hydrocarbon chains. So these little lines, each one is going to have a carbon at each turn carbon, 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 and they're going to also have hydrogens that are going to branch off of them each side. So those bonds with the carbon and hydrogen are going to be a great source of energy. So uh, lipids are also stored in our body as fat, and they will come from nuts, they'll come from uh, butter, and they'll come from different types of oils in our diet. And there are three major ones that we'll talk about. Phospholipid, which is needed for our cells, sort of kind of like a protective layer around our cells, a triglyceride, which is used for energy and, uh, and storage, and cholesterol, which is uh, used in our cell membranes as a regulatory molecule for temperature and fluidity of that membrane. 
Proteins, the third group, are super important, not just for muscles, and everyone thinks like proteins and muscles, they're synonymous. Uh, proteins are also used for transport of different materials. So what gets into a cell and what leaves a cell, it's really important. So this is an amino acid, and an amino acid will have, you have recognized this already, the amino group, and it's also going to have the carboxyl group, and then uh, you see R group and, and the central carbon um, which we'll get to later in our proteins uh, movie or video. And the long strings of amino acids bonds together and then they're going to fold into these unique shapes are then going to be able to perform a certain function and it's not just going to be um, for our muscles. So uh, certain proteins also can move other molecules around in our body in order to say, okay, this molecule needs to go here in our cell. And we have about 20 essential amino acids that we need in our body and we get it from our diet. So uh, vegetarians who don't eat a lot of meat will need to pair rice and beans, let's say for an example, which rice has a certain subset of amino acids and rice has a certain subset and them together is going to form all 20 of those amino acids. And the last one, nucleic acids. This is going to be our DNA or our RNA. Uh, so this is going to be our genetic code, and that genetic code is going to code for protein synthesis or the creation of proteins in our body. So you can see it's going to have a phosphate group on it. It's going to have a nitrogenous base and a sugar. And you can see that uracil here, which is the nitrogenous base, is going to be the only a major difference between RNA and DNA instead of uracil it's going to be thymine in DNA. So it can be a little confusing on how to identify the different mac macromolecules if you're given an image. Um, so something that really helps is just to identify the different elements. <clears throat> so carbs are going to be uh, usually in a hexagon shape and they're gonna contain uh, C, H, and O, so carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Lipids as well are going to contain those three elements. However, they're going to have chains, really long chains of hydrocarbons. So it's going to be C and H, C and H, C and H. Uh, proteins are going to have nitrogen in them as well. So if you ever see a nitrogen uh, element, you can say, oh, that's going to be a protein for sure. And if it doesn't have a phosphate group as well, that's going to be a protein. Nucleic acids will have that phosphate group in them. And so if you see one that is connected and looks like the hand of this little molecule, you know that's going to be a nucleic acid, DNA, or RNA. All right, and if you can go back and fill in this uh, chart to see if you can quiz yourself. And that's it. Thanks.